a student of mine. He is now an attorney at law, and he is uh, soon going to California to begin his law practice there. And he has a message to deliver to you, and a very good one, I suggest. So please uh, give him your attention, Matt. I'll get out of your way. Good morning. My name is Matt Welsh, and today I'm going to be talking about turning your passions into your career path. That's what I'm getting ready to try to do. Next week, I'm moving out to Los Angeles, and I'm going to be working for the William Morris Agency, the Talent and Literary Agency, and working with uh, Entertainment Law. Although this idea of following your passions, it's a nice idea, but it's a, actually not that commonly practiced. For example, last week I was at a party, and this guy in his 60s, he says to me, he goes, well, that's really good you're taking some time off right now before you start work. Because once work begins, that's when the rat race begins. You go to work, you come home, you pay your bills, and someday, maybe in about 20, 30 years, you can retire, and maybe then you can do what you want to do. And I don't know if he was joking with me or just um, trying to be funny, but it took me a little bit by surprise, and I really thought to myself, I really hope my life isn't like that. And um, I'm here today to actually offer you a radically different possibility. The idea that you can really find a career that brings meaning and fulfillment and even fun into your life. Uh, Mark Twain kind of echoes this sentiment when he said, the secret to success is to turn your vocation into a vacation. And this is kind of a funny idea, but um, I'm here to tell you that this is a possibility that really does exist. Um, I've seen it with my friends, and like I said, this is what hopefully I'll get to do starting next week. And not only is this a possibility that is something that exists, I think it's what we need to shoot for in order to be successful and really thrive today. I, you may or may not be aware, but today to get a job, it's more competitive than ever. And partially that's because of globalization and there's a whole new international market that you're gonna be competing for jobs with students um, across the whole country for and across the whole world for. And Thomas Friedman, he talks about this in a book called The World is Flat. He says that changes in technology and globalization, it's causing jobs that once were secure, such as attorneys, accountants, radiologists, they're losing those jobs to people overseas who can do those same jobs more effectively, more efficiently. And he said that in order to really thrive and be successful in today's new globalized economy, that you need to make yourself an untouchable. And an untouchable is someone who can never be replaced, who can never be fired. And he says that one way you can make yourself an untouchable or irreplaceable is to find a job that you are passionate about. Because when you find a job that you're passionate about and you're doing what you love, you bring that intangible quality of yourself that's undefinable, you bring that to the workplace. And your employer and your coworkers, they notice that. And that intangible part of yourself that you are expressing when you are doing what you love to do, that can never be replaced or outsourced by someone who can do the same job at a lower price or more efficiently. But still, it's kind of funny, when I first started to talk to people about turning their passions into their career, they kind of looked at me like that was a bit naive, that was a bit foolish, and a bit, uh, maybe a financially impractical way to live your life. It was nice, but not very feasible. But I came across a study that really debunks the myth that following your passions is an impractical decision to make. And it was in a book called The Attractor Factor, written by best-selling author Dr. Joe Vitale. And he cites a study in there where they took a group, this was about 20 years ago, they took a group of 1,500 people, and they gave them the option of joining two groups. Group A was going to be a group of people who were going to pick a career that they believed was a safe, practical way to make a lot of money. 1,255 people joined group A. Group B was going to be a group of people 
who were going to pick a career that they were passionate about, that they loved to do, and they were just going to trust that the money would come eventually. And they followed up on these groups. And 20 years later, they found that there were 101 millionaires. And of the 101 millionaires, 100 of them were from group B, the group that followed their passions and just trusted that the money would come. Only one out of the 1,255 people that picked a safe, practical career that they believed would ensure them a steady income actually achieved great financial success. And there's a couple powerful points to take away from this study. And the first point is that it is indeed a financially practical decision to make, to follow your passions. You are free to do what you love to do, to pick a career that brings fun and joy and meaning into your life. And the second point is that if you ignore your passions, then you are significantly decreasing the likelihood of achieving great financial success. And if you're sitting there today and you would like to find a career that you're passionate about, that's fun and fulfilling to you, but you don't know exactly what your passions are, then that's okay. You're in good company. Even if you're seniors, most people really don't, may not have, quote, found their passion. That's okay. You can, there's a couple very easy techniques that you can use to find your passion and then actually turn that into your career path. And the first thing that you can do, really, is to focus on what you enjoy doing. There are certain activities that all of you do where you excel in, and you excel in these activities easily. And other people have probably complimented you on these or noticed these. But there are certain activities that you bring joy to your life. Each of you are here because you've been given some very incredible gifts. And you've been given these gifts and these talents for a reason. You've been given them to use them. And you don't have to have this all planned out. I mean, five year, 10 year plans, they may be helpful for some people to get focused, but you don't need a plan. I mean, the great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in his famous speech, he said, I have a dream. He didn't say, I have a plan. And he also went on and said, take the first step in faith, and then the staircase will reveal itself. And that's all you really need to do. It sounds crazy, but you just need to take that first step in faith. And just then the next opportunity will come, then the next opportunity will come, and you'll look back in your life in amazement, and it'll just seem like it all fell into place. And just to give you kind of an example of how this, of someone who practiced this and really achieved great success with it, there's a guy by the name of Steve Jobs. Has anyone in here heard of Steve Jobs? Does anyone here have an iPod? Steve Jobs, he was the creator of the iPod, and he also was the developer and designer of the first Macintosh computer. And he, it's interesting, he didn't start off with any grand ambitions And when he was in college. He was at a small college, at Reed College, where he happened to be interested in calligraphy. So he devoted the majority of his time taking calligraphy courses and avoided taking some of the more mainstream courses. And he just did this simply because he enjoyed studying calligraphy. For whatever reason, he was talented in it, he was interested in it, and he just devoted his efforts and his study to learn as much as he could and to practice this. And a couple of years ago, he spoke to the Stanford's graduating class, and he told them that 10 years after he took those calligraphy classes, he used what he learned in them to help design the first Macintosh computer. And he said that if he had never taken those calligraphy classes, he never would have known how to program that Mac. And that many of the PCs that we use today would not have their multiple typefaces or proportionally spaced fonts. And he finished his speech and he said to them, he said, you gotta trust in something. Call it your gut, life, destiny, karma, whatever. This approach has never let me down. Stay hungry, stay foolish. And this is what it's like when you're following your passions. You have that hunger inside of you. You're waking up and you're excited about the day. You're looking forward to your activities. And one thing begins to go to another.